Hello guys, welcome to another interesting video on our Be Aware channel. We bring lot of exciting and interesting stuffs related to education in domain of manufacturing simulation and industrial engineering. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website beaverchannel.com. We have a lot of exciting stuffs for you. So in this today's video, we are going to learn about Excel importing. Okay, so this is related to a feature which Flexim Simulation has where we can import the data from the Microsoft Excel into our simulation model and we can also transfer our data that is we can also export the data from simulation to the Excels. So this is a great and fascinating feature we have in the simulation model where data transfer that is importing and exporting is quite dynamic and feasible enough. So in the today's video, we're going to learn about how are we going to import the data from the Excel and what are the, uh, the features it is going to have, what are the customizations it can be doing and the stuff. So let us understand the simulation model first. So what we have done is we have a given the source and we have four processors being created and they are having different cycle times from the moment of the parts which are going on to the processor. You can analyze that there are some processors which are pretty slow. There are some processors which are pretty fast. So comment and let me know what is the fastest processor and which is the slowest processor. So the processor one is this, two is this, three is this, and four is this, and the parts go from Q2 into the sink. So now when we look at the cycle times, okay, this is for the processor one, this is for the processor two, this is three and four, this is the global table we have created as cycle times. Let me know in the comment section if you need a video on understanding how to create the global tables, understand the properties of the global tables, and a lot more interesting stuff. So this is about global table cycle time. So now if you could look at, we are able to see that these processors are running at the different cycle times and the cycle times are fetched into this processor from the global table. If you could look at, we have already assigned a code which reads from the table and fetches the value into the processor, okay? But the question is now, I need to import the data into this global table from an external Excel okay from an external data source then how i'm going to do that so i'm just going to reset the model for sake and then when we go in this excel you can look that this is the excel interface in a flexum where you can import and export the data so we have two tabs importing and exporting and then we have custom tab where you can execute your code okay and based on the code the importing and the exporting can be executed so we will go into the details, but let me also know that in comment section, do you need the video on understanding exporting in the Excels and customs in the Excel interface? Because I'm going to create a videos based on your inputs so that it is going to maximize and help you a lot rather than bring the videos and it would not help you a lot. So let me know in the comment section, what about videos? you want and what topics you need to cover in the upcoming videos. So what I've done is by this plus, okay, side, what you can do is you can add a, a, a entity which you can then edit the properties for and you can put in the import. You need to remember that whatever name of the, uh, basically I try to practice this because it is going to prevent me from getting a lot of errors so is what I do is, I keep the same name of the sheet in the Excel, okay, and the global table sheet. So what I do basically, I'll just tell you now. So the global table is named with cycle times. The input stuff, I will rename with cycle times. The actual sheet name, I will put it as cycle times because my Excel, okay, because my Excel is also with the cycle time stuffs, okay. Uh, it is going to show me uh, that sheet which I have created in the Excel has a sheet named cycle times. Then when you go in the Excel workbook, you need to browse that from here. Okay, when you click on this here, you will be able to browse your Excel. 
the big point to remember while exporting and importing is that the Excel, okay, which you are going to pull the data from, needs to be in the same folder where your FlexSim simulation model is, okay. So it cannot be like your Excel is in drive D, you're working in C, your model is in C and Excel is in D, and then you are importing and exporting out of the scope. So what you need to do is, the Excel should be in the same folder in which my this FlexSim simulation model is present, okay. Then only it has to be seamless and working perfectly. In the table data, what you need to do is, you need to select which table you need to import to, okay. So I'm going to import to the global table named cycle times, okay. Here you can see the data preview, how it is going to look at. Now use row headers means you're going to use the first column of your imported data as the header. So if you look at, this was my first column in the Excel, is considered as a header named cycle times. When I'm going to check this. And when I'm going to check this, is my first row in the Excel is going to get considered as column headers in the global table. Who uses the global table and knows about global table might know that when we need to refer some value, okay? Just like I'll just show you here uh, in the process of when you look at, okay? How you are doing, just look at this. You need a row header and you need a, need a column header to fetch a value to a certain entity and make the dynamic. That is the reason we need to have the row headers and the column headers unique so that we can fetch them based on requirements. So this is processor one, two, three, four, my unique column headers. And row header is my cycle time. There can be process time, setup time, whatever stuff you want. But the benefit of this is that it automatically considers your row, first row and the first column as its respective headers in the global table. Okay, here you can also specify what should be your starting row, what should be the total rows, it should only import and it should exclude other rows and stuff. But for the betterment, like to import everything from that sheet, you can keep it as zero. Then we have data distinction here where you can select what type of data you need to import into for the per column per row and then our customizations. Values only very fast is the best thing you can do. There is one more best feature which you can use is input the table or model reset. So if you check this, what is going to happen, whenever you're going to change your Excel and if the data sets in the Excel is going to be changed, when you hit a reset, okay, the importing will going to get started. This is all about the features of basically what you can say is that the FlexSim importing. I applied, I okay. And when I reset this, you see, they started to import. Otherwise, you can also go in this tab and click on this import table and the importing will be done. Once the importing is done, the data sets which have been updated into the Excel will be getting reflected into this and you will be able to see this stuff. So when I go here, okay, and when you check in here, if I say change this as 30, 30, 10, I save this, and basically if I go back into the flex and simulation domain, I said this, it has to change 30, 30, 30, 10. This is a wonderful feature for FlexSim if you could look at. Okay, you are importing the data set from your Excels, as getting reflected you can also export the data let me know in the comment section you need a video on that to how to export the data to the excel but we have covered a topic of importing the data from the excel into your global table into the simulation model and then dynamically fetch into the object the entities which are available in the FlexSim. so you need not have to again and again go and change the cycle times for the entities just import the Excel, it will come into your global table and from the global table, it will directly go into the entities and the model is ready to run and analyze respectively. So this is the steps related to Excel import. Let me know how this video helped you and was it wonderful and informative for you. Did you enjoy this? If you enjoyed this, please give us a like to this video and share it with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and visit our website beourchannel.com. We are eagerly waiting for you to join our community beourchannel.com and let us know your views on to that also.
So stay safe till we bring another interesting video on abeyavachan.com and stay simulating. Also, I would like to bring a note is please do watch our industrial engineering videos. We are bringing it just for you. Industrial engineering lectures into the domain of all topics related to industrial engineering. A theory of industrial engineering we are bringing in forms of fantastic videos so that you could learn it, grasp it and upscale yourself. And the practical for industrial engineering is manufacturing simulation which you already watch. But I'm not getting the response to my industrial engineering videos. Please do share it with your friends because we also want industrial engineering theory to grow up. Great. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for staying with us till the end of this video. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.